viewers are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. Check podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. Keep up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the new sounds empire. Just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us and someone will play for you in just a moment. From NewSounds.org, it's time for another live in-studio performance in the series we call the Soundcheck Podcast. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, I'm John Schaefer. Today, we welcome back to our studio the band Mandolin Orange. Since releasing their first record in 2010, they have amassed a huge audience. Their songs have been streamed over a hundred million times, but they've done it all quietly and their songs invite you to lean in and listen quietly. Their latest record is called Tides of a Teardrop. It's just out, and Mandolin Orange is here to play some of it for us, beginning with this song called Golden Embers. Like an old friend, kinder than expected. That Cadillac came and gave our girl a ride. Loss has no end, it binds to our connection. And we don't speak of it, we don't even try. Help me to share the trouble that you've got burning in. Then you can help me, and in our time together, her memory will ever shine like gold. I miss the old hymns when she used to sing. The sparrows spread their mortal wings. But now they've all lighted with the silence of strings, like notes on the pages. She breathed life into all things If you could help me To 
shared the trouble that you've got burning in, then you can help me and in our time together, her memory will ever shine. Like an old friend, reach out to me and bathe me in the light. Understand me and try to help me to share the trouble that you've got burning in, and you can help. Lovely. The band Mandolin Orange live here in our new sound studio on this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast and a song called Golden Embers, which is from their latest album called Tides of a Teardrop. And as ever, uh, Mandolin Orange centers on the singing and playing of Andrew Marlin, who uh, was on mandolin, and Emily France, who just put down the fiddle and has picked up a guitar. It's great to have the two of you back with us. Yeah, well, glad to be you. here. Yeah. And uh, the touring band, Josh Oliver on guitar, uh, Joe Westerland on a very stripped-down percussion kit, mm -hmm. and uh, Clint uh, Mulliken playing the, uh, the upright bass. So um, Golden Embers, Andrew, is the first song on the record. Yep. And it isn't, you're not two lines into the first song on the record before you begin to get the kind of the theme. Yep. There's the mention of the Cadillac coming to take her away. Uh, which is, of course, the same image that Roseanne Cash famously used in her album, Black Cadillac, where, yeah. you know, her meditation on the passing of her mother and her father and her stepmother. So uh, I, I guess I have two questions here. One is, were you, when you write, when you set out to write something like this, are you aware of your antecedents and are you kind of checking out what other people have done? Not consciously. I think it's all there. And, uh, and I think it just you know those those correlations are are pretty easy to make just because i mean i i don't know if cadillac's just got a corner on the funeral market or what but uh you know that's that to me is just one of those images that goes along with that that ride to the cemetery you right. know and uh and it's always it's always a hard one when you see those things rolling up but uh but i think in some cases like in this song it's not always the worst thing for the individual who's taken that last ride you know i mean there are worse things than death mainly you know, the worst part about death is the people that are still here and, and are left to mourn and grieve. So, mm -hmm. so uh, th the specific death that, that kind of prompted this songwriting was your, your mother? Yep. Uh, it's been about 14 years ago now. So why now? What what was it that, that made you feel like this was the time where you needed to address this and, and to do it in not just a song, but in a whole album's worth? Um, it really started uh, with the song Late September, I think it was September of 2016. It's always that time of year because uh, mom passed away in early October. When the fall starts setting in is when I'll just start feeling down and, and really 
uh, just taking on this fatalistic view of life and yeah, it wasn't very pleasant, you know, you know to myself or to the people around me. And I, I just wanted to confront that and deal with that, you know, to heal for myself, but also for my loved ones. Mm-hmm. And, and Emily, you know, one of the things that, that comes up during the course of the album is it al- isn't always the narrator that we're hearing from. It's the people around the narrator. So, you know, having to having to deal with, you know, Andrew on an <laughs> and this this kind of seasonal thing, you know, uh, d- did you feel that you were kind of part of the process in the, the, the songwriting or in bringing the songs from an idea to, to something that you could actually play? Um, I can't take too much credit for that, but I, I do uh, like it when Andrew bounces ideas off of me. But I do think um, a lot of the 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 motivation to write these songs for Andrew and uh, a lot of what comes through in the songs is just how that kind of grief can affect your day to day and affect all your relationships. So Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely a lot of that. Well, now uh, at the very beginning of the the session today, we heard just a little bit of like you used to from the record and Emily, you're singing lead there. Obviously, Andrew, you're singing lead on Golden Embers. How, how do you, how do you deploy the, the two voices? Um, that, I think that just comes about in the arranging process. Emily's always got great ideas because she's, I think not quite as maybe invested in the like internal workings of the song. She's able to sit back and, and see it for what it is and, and how maybe other people are going to perceive that. And that that's a huge part of the arranging process. And I think what actually keeps my songwriting very honest and true because she can she can tell me exactly how it's coming across instead of me sitting there going like, no, it makes people feel this way, you know? <laughs> um and so, yeah, I think that's when we really decide, like, who's going to sing what, you know, what, if, it, mm. if it feels more natural for her to take the lead or me. And sometimes the subject matter, I feel like, sometimes, determines yeah. that. Sometimes the subject matter, but I think more often than not, it's just how it feels and sounds when we play it. Right. So uh, the album is Tides of a Teardrop, and it really is all of a piece, Andrew. So uh, having, d- did you decide at the beginning that this was going to be a whole album, or were you just r- ready with the one song, Late September, which you'll do for us in a little while, and, and just taking it as it came? Yeah, the songwriting process was a, a slow one for this one. And then I think uh, it was going to be a nine-song record, and then uh, the last song to that I wrote was called... Um, suspended in heaven and uh, I wrote that one on Mother's Day last year and it was like no it has to go on the record you know wait we can't go to print yet so uh, yeah I feel like we really started noticing that there was a central theme after all of the songs were written really so, yeah huh so uh, it just happened that way wow I'm glad <laughs> you mentioned suspended in heaven because uh, you know, it's funny. Your 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 last record was on the Rolling St- on Rolling Stone's list of best country albums and on the Billboard bluegrass charts. And Suspended in Heaven, you know, is kind of emblematic of this mixing of of country and bluegrass and folk that you guys have done for so many years. It's it's basically a country waltz, right? Yeah, that's the. Uh the old power waltz, as we like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it has, a, a, you know, it has like. Uh, Andrew, you do some passing vocal fry, you know, in your vocals that that kind of sounds bluegrassy, you know, that if not high, at least lonesome sound. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, as high as we could get. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you guys care where people are putting these records and how they're how they're casting them? Not necessarily. I mean, I think each song sounds a little different to our ear in terms of maybe where it fits in and but all of those things are are all of those genres are music that we like to listen to we we listen to a lot of you know stanley brothers and old bluegrass gospel type music so that was part of the reason we wanted the song that song to sound that way even though it doesn't necessarily line up with all the other tracks yeah um the the song you're going to do next for us is the wolves uh, the last time you guys were here, it was 2013, you had just put out This Side of Jordan, an album full of kind of metaphorical and elusive writing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's less of that, it seems, on, on this record. <laughs> it's much more straightforward, but there are a couple of 
you know, kind of metaphors of the deer in one song and the wolves here, it seems. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a metaphor for what? I think uh, that's a great question. Um, that's the beauty of a metaphor, isn't it? That yeah, everyone yep. can just draw their own conclusions. But yeah, on this that, one, which is why I almost hesitated asking because <laughs> I, I kind of feel like the the magic is exactly what you just said. Yeah, I like um, I like to think of this one and when it was written. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but with the I like thinking of the Statue of Liberty as being kind of a mother figure for the country, and so it's more of just a reflection of what's going on right now. Mm. Um, I think with our, with how people are feeling and how some some folks are hesitant to actually voice that, and so uh, yeah, I think I think that would be kind of the stance on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that that song's probably maybe one of the most uh, strong metaphors on the album, and it's one of the only sort of more political leaning songs, um, but it still carries that sort of mother relationship yeah. theme, yeah. which is kind of cool. All right, let's, uh, let's hear it. The, the song is from the band Mandolin Orange from their latest album called uh, Tides of a Teardrop. Let's hear The Wolves. I'll always greet you At my door you're welcome in There can be no transgression As a means to an end It's on the wind the wolves are howling Open arms are closed in fear Helping hands are clenched in anger Broken hearts beyond repair And everything's so great can't get better Makes me want to cry But I'll go out out At the moon tonight There she stands so tall and mighty With her keen and watchful eye And the heart of a mother Holding out her guiding light Is this a hard road to travel? This old rock from end to end The sun it rises on her brow And sets upon the great expanse And everything so great can't get better Makes me want to cry But I'll go out how at the moon Stands so tall and mighty, her gaze facing the east. And at her back, our doors are closing as we grin and bare our teeth. It's on the wind, the wolves are howling. She cries, they're drawing near. Well, turn around, turn around, my darling. No, the wolves are here. And everything's so great, can't get better. Makes me want to cry But I'll go out how At the moon tonight Yeah, I'll go out how
song is called The Wolves, live performance here in our studio from the band Mandolin Orange. You'll find it on their brand new album called Tides of a Teardrop. Um, Emily, I can't remember if I asked you guys this the last time you were here, because it was, after all, almost six years ago. Why orange? I mean, I understand mandolin, yeah. you know. Why, why the color orange? Because nothing rhymes with it. <laughs> ah. It's just, yeah. And you were just, you were afraid if you picked any other color that people would, what, make up nasty schoolyard rhymes about you? you I mean, just, you <laughs> never know. You know, we've been in enough green rooms where we, I don't trust people to, uh, to, not, to not do that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Don't know. So, how, how different a band are you guys now than you were when you started when we last saw you, I mean, does does it feel like, you know, you've sort of stayed true to what you began with, or have you moved away from that somewhat? Uh, I think a little of both, but for the most part, it feels pretty much like we're still doing somewhat the same thing. We just are a lot more confident maybe than we were six years ago. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, obviously we weren't playing very much with uh, a band or at all, back then and right. um, for the last several years we've been playing with these guys and recording with them and um, it it feels really good to have found a way to perform as a band and really feel like a cohesive unit that way but have it, it still is not overpowering what we originally set out to do as a duo. So did you set out to kind of make front porch music, you know, where it, it just, it, it didn't sort of present as a quote-unquote band thing that, you know, in a, in a sort of promotional marketing business <laughs> concert setting? Yeah, I don't know if that was a conscious thing. I think it was more just the songs. Have, I've always written from a very personal place, and so I think the songs come across that way, and it, it almost feels unnecessary to, to blow them up to this point of being so grandeur, you know? Like, it, yeah. it just feels more natural to have them sit back and be what they are and the folks that want to lean in and listen and we'll be here playing. Mandolin Orange is playing for us here in our studio today and as soon as they leave here they're heading to the Music Hall of Williamsburg where they are performing tonight in Brooklyn. Um, how is it traveling with a four-month-old? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, been great for the last week. We'll see. Uh -huh. how it continues. She, she has a lot of road uncles. <laughs> <and> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> All of our shirts have spit up on them now. <laughs> <laughs> well, now see, when I asked if you were a different band now than you were before, the answer is obviously yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> all your clothes have spit up on them. Exactly. <laughs> and we've got a lot more patience in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when you do play live, um, you know, even even with a five piece as opposed to just the two, as you were just both saying, you know, it's still it's still intimate it's almost like chamber music you know mm -hmm. whereas most concerts are like big operatic or symphonic things you know it's like hit them with the big sound yeah uh you guys seem to be sort of really uh, whether it's conscious at this point i think it must be conscious on your part you, you're you're going for something else yeah well i think uh even when you turn these guys loose here josh and joe and clint they're they're always a study in patience. I think they're they're listening as much as they are playing, and I, I've learned a lot uh, with my soloing and just and comping and just my whole musical approach just by playing with them. And I'm sure Emily could probably say the same thing. And yeah, I don't. I think it is conscious, but it's also something that comes really naturally, and that and that's why for us we love recording with them and playing mm -hmm. as this unit because it does. It feels that way, you know. It doesn't feel like we have to to try and keep things spacey and keep it uh what's the word i'm looking for emily you're good at this sometimes uh <laughs> sorry i wasn't you don't listening. have to you weren't listening <laughs> <laughs> you're also good at that <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um no i just keeping she it she has uh, an excuse she has a four month old that's true, that's true. True. She mother of a four month old can space out any time <laughs> she wants Absolutely. um are you thinking are you talking about like filling all available space with yeah yeah it's like it's like uh knowing knowing what you could play there and knowing uh how you could fill the space and then choosing to sometimes not do not that. Exactly. And I think, yeah. I think that's a powerful way to approach music. And yeah. it's not always the case when you ask somebody to come play in your band. Yeah. 
So, uh, Andrew, you mentioned uh, this song, Late September. Uh, this is the one that started this whole project for right. you, right? Um, shall we hear it? Sure. Yeah. All right. We're speaking with and listening to the band Mandolin Orange, performing here in our new sound studio on this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast. And once again, the song is called Late September. It's close enough. We'll go with that. One, two, three. When it's closing time in late September, and the street lights search for shadows on my mind. The bars all holler last call And the moon's on her descent I stand towards the morning A new day to begin Counting down to closing time again. She swears my youthful glow's only hiding Beyond the borders of my mind But these rolling hills don't bind me They simply remind me The sun is sinking low And all I've left behind me Counting down to closing time Darling, I've been thinking, is it selfish pride? Keeps a man from sharing all the tears he hides. Cause when it's closing time in late September, and the summer turns slowly into fall. Our mother with such splendor Dies in brilliant color Thoughts once put together By hospital room window Counting down to closing time
Mandolin Orange, live in our studio with a performance of the song Late September from their most recent album, Tides of a Teardrop. And um, so, Andrew, um, by the end of the album, the, the narrator, you, seems to have come to some sort of resolution, perhaps even a place of solace. Uh, having written all these songs, and I know you're only a week into this, but now performing them, you know, night after night, does it feel like you've resolved something? I, I don't think it's quite resolved, but it's definitely, I'm feeling much lighter these days, and it feels great to talk about it and uh, not feel like I can't. You know, I, I feel like uh, the loss of a parent isn't isn't something that uh, is unique to individuals. I mean, everyone at some point um, probably has to go through that, and I think for me it always just felt like it wasn't worthy of complaining about, you mm -hmm. know, and worthy of feeling bad about. And now that I've um, got all these songs and I'm able to talk about it, it, it does feel very healing to to know that I can share it. And, each, and e even though the experience is not unique, I think for each individual it's always it's always different, you know. I mean, yeah. nobody deals with loss the same way, and I think that's that's what's unique about my losses that I've I've dealt with it in my way and I, and hopefully with writing these songs anyone who else anyone else who's possibly having trouble dealing with loss in some way can come to these songs and take away some healing power from it as well right whether it's whether they're interpreting the wolves to be <laughs> what you meant or what you know what they take away from it you know yeah and I think I think that's another reason I I love writing uh, metaphors because the, the songs change over time too you know as we sing them I think how they were originally written and then how they end up you know feeling live are two totally different things and yeah. sometimes after I get Emily's perception of a song I actually end up thinking about it a completely different way yeah well the the live performances here in the studio sounded great today Thank you. Uh, Thank you guys you. are playing tonight at the Music Hall of Williamsburg the band Mandolin Orange touring around great to have you guys back with us thanks, thanks so much for having us. Be here. thank you